Hello everyone. Myself Vidya Sagar, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Tandai Periyar Government Institute of Technology, Bellur. In continuation with our previous lectures of railways, airports, docks, and harbor engineering, we are going to discuss an important topic: geometric design of railway track. What is this geometric design of railway track? So we have studied in highway engineering the geometric design of highway, which includes horizontal curves, vertical curves, transition curves, maximum permissible speed, super elevation. All those things are applicable in railway engineering also. So before proceeding for this geometric design of railway track, we have to understand the necessity of geometric design. If we don't properly design the railway track, we obviously know what will happen. Derailment. Why derailment occurs? Most of the train derailments are due to the following reasons: track defects, vehicular defects, and operational defects. It is very important for tracks to have proper geometric design in order to ensure the safe and smooth running of trains at maximum permissible speeds, carrying the heaviest axle loads. The speed and axle load of the train are very important, and sometimes. Are also included as parameters to be considered while arriving at the geometric design of the track. So when we talk about this geometric design of railway track, we usually talking about gradients in the track, which includes grade compensation on curves, rising gradient, falling gradient, widening of gauge on curves, curvature of the track, which includes both horizontal and vertical curves, transition curves, sharpness of the curve in terms of radius or degree of the curve. Can't or super elevation on curves, etc. Also, we'll be discussing about the alignment of track, which includes straight as well as curved alignment. Need for geometric design to ensure the smooth and safe running of trains, to achieve maximum speeds, to carry heavy axle loads, to avoid accidents and derailments due to a defective permanent fail, to ensure the track requires least maintenance. And also for good aesthetics. Now we'll talk about this gradients. What is a gradient? Gradients are provided to negotiate the rise or fall in the level of a railway track. A rising gradient is one in which the track rises in the direction of the moment of traffic, and a down or falling gradient is one in which the track loses elevation in the direction of the moment of the traffic. For example, if there is a rise of one meter in 400 meter, then the gradient is one in 400 or 0.25 percentage. So the rising gradient and falling gradient is clearly depicted in the given picture. You could see the rising gradient is one in 400 and falling gradient is one on 400. Gradients are provided to meet the following objectives: to reach various stations at different elevations. to follow the natural contours of the ground to the extent possible and also to reduce the cost of earthwork which involves cutting and filling so what are all the different types of gradient we have four different types of gradient rolling gradient pusher or helper gradient momentum gradient and gradients in station and yards we'll see one by one what is a rolling gradient the rolling gradient is the steepest gradient that exists in a section it determines the maximum load that can be hauled by a locomotive on that particular section while deciding the rolling gradient of a section it is not only the severity of the gradient but also its length as well as its position with respect to the gradients on both sides that have to be taken into consideration in general in plain terrain the gradient in a range of 1 in 150 to 1 in 250 in hilly terrain we have the range of 1 in 100 to 1 in 150 the next one is pusher or helper gradient in hilly areas the rate of rise of the terrain becomes very important when trying to reduce the length of the railway line and therefore sometimes gradients steeper than the rolling gradient are provided to reduce the overall cost in such situations one locomotive that is engine is not adequate to pull the entire load and obviously will be in a need of an extra locomotive 
when the gradient of the ensuing section is so steep as to necessitate the use of an extra engine for pushing the train then those types of gradient are called as pusher or helper gradient examples of pusher gradient are dudni breaker section of central railways and darjeeling himalayan railway sections the next one is momentum gradient the momentum gradient is steeper than the ruling gradient and can be overcome by a train because of the momentum it gathers while running on the section in some cases in valleys a falling gradient is followed by a rising gradient in such a situation a train coming down a falling gradient acquires good speed as well as momentum which gives additional kinetic energy to the train and allows it to negotiate gradients steeper than the ruling gradient in sections with momentum gradients there won't be any sort of obstacles like signals which may bring the train to a critical juncture and the last type of gradient the is gradient provided at stations and yards the gradients in stations and yards are quite flat due to the following reasons to prevent standing vehicles from rolling and moving away from the yard due to the combined effect of gravity and strong winds and also to reduce the additional resistive forces required to start a locomotive to the extent possible it may be mentioned here that generally yards are not leveled completely and a certain flat gradients are provided in order to ensure good proper drainage the maximum gradient prescribed in station yards on indian railways is 1 in 400 while the recommended gradient is 1 in 1000 the next important parameter is grade compensation on curves the ruling gradient is the maximum gradient provided on a particular section that we have seen while discussing about the different types of gradient but if a curve lies on a ruling gradient then obviously the resistance due to the gradient is increased in order to avoid resistance beyond allowable limits the gradients are reduced on curves this reduction in gradients on curves is known as grade compensation on curves so we are simply compensating the gradient on behalf of the curves curves provide extra resistance to the movement of trains as a result gradients have to be compensated to the following extent on curves on broad gauge tracks we have to provide 0.04 percentage per degree of the curve or 70 by r whichever is minimum on meter gauge tracks 0.03 percent per degree of curve or 52.5 by r whichever is minimum on narrow gauge tracks 0.02 percent per degree of curve or 35 by r whichever is minimum where capital r is the radius of the curve in meter the next thing is widening of gauge on curves the prior thing which we have discussed is great compensation on curves this one is widening of gauge on curves a vehicle normally assumes the central position on a straight track and the flanges of the wheels stay clear of the rails the situation however changes when a train negotiates a curved track as soon as the vehicle moves on to a curve the flange of the outside wheel of the leading axle continues to travel in a straight line till it rubs against the rail due to the coning of wheels the outside wheel travels a longer distance compared to the inner wheel this however becomes impossible for the vehicle as a whole since the rigidity of the wheel base causes the trailing axle to occupy a different position in an effort to make up for the difference in the distance traveled by the outer wheel and the inner wheel the inside wheels slip backward and the outer wheels skid forward a close study of the running of vehicles on curves indicates that the wear of flanges eases the passage of the vehicle round curves as it has the effect of increasing the gauge thus the widening of gauge on a curve has in fact the same effect and tends to decrease the wear and tear on both the wheel as well as the track the widening of gauge on curves can be calculated using the formula given below the extra width on curves to be provided could be calculated using 13 into b plus l whole square divided by r the capital b is the wheel base of the vehicle in meters and capital r is the radius of the curve in meters and l is nothing but the lap of the flange in meters 
which could be calculated using 0.02 into h square plus dh whole to the power of 1 by 2 where h is the depth of the flange below the top of the rail and d is the diameter of the wheel of the vehicle in consideration so in table 13.7 they have specified some standards for curves we have type of track gauge tolerances for broad gauge as well as for meter gauge and narrow gauge for example for curves of radius less than 350 meter for broad gauge 290 meter for meter gauge and 400 meter to 100 meter for narrow gauge the gauge tolerances for broad gauge could be up to 10 mm so overall in this video lecture we have talked about the necessity of geometric design different types of gradient great compensation on curves and finally we discussed about the widening of gauges on curves so these are all the important things that you have to consider while designing the geometry of a railway line thank you